between Mike Shane, the real Mike Shane from 911 Incorporated, against this imposter team up with Hackmeyer. And here they come to the ring, a very popular duo. They haven't teamed up much, but everybody knows the talent these two individuals possess. It's Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews teaming up together, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with here in IPW and, quite frankly, all over the wrestling world. Two of the best wrestlers on the IPW roster. Former IPW heavyweight champions, both of them. Now they've formed a tag team, and they've made it very, very obvious they got their sights set on the IPW tag team titles, and they've also also got many bookings lined up throughout the country. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. And there goes Hack Meyer saying Mike Sullivan pulled his hair. It wouldn't surprise me considering Mike Sullivan a protege of Rod Nemi if he took some shortcuts. But even I have to admit, there's no hair there to pull Hack Meyers. Mike Sullivan told me in the back of the WrestlePlex before this match, Ronnie, you sit back here and take it easy. Keep an eye on my old lady because neither one of you are needed during this match. Me and Scoot are going to go out there, show the fans of the WrestlePlex and Hack Myers and Michael Shane what we're all about. I tell you, I agree with you, Ron Nemi. Mike Sullivan does not need you at ringside. He's a four-time IPW heavyweight champion. And quite frankly, the last time you went out to the ring with him, he lost that belt to Agent Steele. It wasn't my fault. Agent Steele did what he had to do. The ring actually collapsed because of some of the madness that took place earlier in the night. These guys didn't care. Mike Sullivan honored his title defense. He went in there and he lost fair and square to Agent Steele, the new IPW heavyweight champion. I might not like it, but I'm going to give respect to both competitors. I tell you what, Mike Sullivan, I don't know what it is about him, but title changes, Mike Sullivan and Broken Rings all seem to go together. Longtime fans of IPW will remember that against a former wrestler here, STB, Mike Sullivan actually unified the hardcore and heavyweight titles for a while, and the ring was broken during that match as well. Mike Sullivan it might just be called the ring breaker. Mike Sullivan, a former hardcore, former tag team, and former heavyweight champion. Hack Myers, what a lot of people don't appreciate when it comes to an old school technician like Hack Myers, look at the base on that headlock that he's got on Mike Sullivan. You see the leverage he's got by the positioning of his feet, and here he's got a test of strength go at Mike Sullivan, and he bends him back. Mike Sullivan right into a perfect bridge. You're not going to take him out that easy, Hack. I tell you what, Hack Myers doesn't look like he'd be as strong as Mike Sullivan, but if you play it smart and you get your leverage like he did, you can hold your own. But right there, Mike Sullivan finally gets out of it and gets a headlock. And I tell you what, Ron Nemi, I usually spend time here jawing at you, going back and forth with our little mini feud that I booked, or whatever you want to call it. But quite frankly, this match is too good and too important, so let's just try to get along and call the match. Hack Myers shoots Mike Sullivan off, goes for a big hip toss. Mike Sullivan blocks it, hits him with a hip toss of his own, meets him with a big-ass Mike Sullivan body. Slam. Hack Myers is level, and Mike Sullivan just sits back and waits. Oh, look at Hack selling the Cuban assassin style. Did you say that Mike Sullivan had a big ass? No, no, that wasn't what I meant at all. Oh, okay. And I tell you, fans may be wondering why is Hack Myers wearing a shirt of the Black Nature Boy, one of his opponents. He's not trying to get into his head. He's actually paying a little bit of respect to his opponent because he trained him, and it must be nice to train a guy and see him go on to the heights that Scoot Andrews has gone on to. He's been in tournaments all over the country, held belts all over the country. He's not just a superstar here at IPW, he's a superstar all over the world. All four of these wrestlers have wrestled for the WWF, they've wrestled for the top independents in, throughout the country, and you see Hack Myers, you see the presence of mind, he was coming off with a big Hack Myers elbow, Scoot Andrews gets up, rolls out of the way, Hack Myers is smart enough to put on the brakes, he's not going to come flying through the air with some Sal Balomo 1980s style missed elbow by about six feet, he's not going to make a fool out of himself, and he tags in the debut. You and Michael Shane, the protege, student, and some say relative of Shawn Michaels. See, he's walking on all cocky, just like Shawn Michaels might, and he's trying to get the fans behind him, and I hate to tell him, as much as I like this kid, you're not going to get the fans behind you when you're wrestling Scoot Andrews, and that shows just why Scoot Andrews getting the fans into it in his own right. Not only is he one of the best wrestlers here in IPW, he's also one of the most popular. You're not going to come into the WrestlePlex, clap your hands a few times to get the fans behind you. These are tough to please fans. They're they're not the smart marks that you find up in the Northeast that sit behind their computer all day long and pick apart videotapes but don't even attend the matches. These people appreciate talent and they want to see good wrestling. They want to see the high flying. They want to see the mat work. They want to see a little bit of everything. Coming in and clapping your hands and saying, come on. It takes a leg lariat like that by Scoot Andrews and a wicked clothesline to get the fans. 
fans of IPW behind you, Aaron. I tell you what, IPW fans definitely very appreciative. They know their stuff, but like you said, we've given them so much here. Sometimes they don't give quite the props or the pops or whatever you want to call it when they are warranted. But if you go out there and you really impress them, they will show their appreciation as they just did for Scoot Andrews. Scoot Andrews has done everything he can to win these fans over. It didn't matter who... Oh, I thought he was going for a huge Hurricane Rana. Scoot Andrews caught him halfway through the rotation and drops him into a huge face buster, but Hagmeyers comes in and breaks up the pin. And the Mud Baby Star Stevens goes over to Hack and says, Hey, brother, do you have any funny? Yeah, you would think he'd be going over there saying, don't come in the ring. But Star Stevens, he doesn't care about that. He knows it's IPW. He's going to let a little shenanigans go on. After all, that is your basis of tag team wrestling. You would never be able to tell that Scoot Andrews and Mike Sullivan have only teamed up about four or five times. They hit this kid with a huge hip toss, driving him into the mat. And then they take turns, absolutely leveling him with perfectly executed elbows, simultaneously collapsing his chestal region. His chestal region, a very popular phrase here in IPW, as is Medulla Oblongata on there. Michael Shane with the shortcuts, taking some punches right to the face of Mike Sullivan, but Star Stevens letting him go at it. He's got to be considered the most lenient and hardcore referee here in IPW, and that's saying something. That referee will do everything he can to get the fans what they paid to see. That's a hard-fought wrestling match. You see these guys, there's again, how they can sit there and counter every... Look at Mike Sullivan level Michael Shane with a huge forearm. But how they can counter every single offensive attempt they do, I don't get it. They've never been in the ring together. I know Michael Shane studies the tapes. I know Mike Sullivan sits at home getting laid all the time. How they notice, he holds him up for a vertical suplex for about 97 seconds there. Before what? Dropping. Okay, so 72. All right, that's a lot closer. But let me tell you, how do they do that, Rodney? I'll tell you how they do that, because these guys are just that good. When you know what you're doing in the squared circle, you may not have had to wrestle a guy before to be able to counter his maneuvers. You can just tell what the guy's going to do when you have the talent of Michael Shane, Hackmeyer, Scoot Andrews, and Mike Sullivan. You talk about Michael Shane, everyone talks about his ego, they talk about his attitude, they talk about him being a chip off the old And his block. brother Todd has an ego too. That isn't his brother, you're talking about Mike Shane, oh. I think you're talking about this idiot Michael Shane coming here trying to steal the hottest gimmick going at IPW, but I gotta give the kid credit, this see you see Hack Myers, as Scoot Andrews gets whipped in the ropes, Hack Myers nails him with a big knee to the small of the back, and Michael Shane capitalizes, and the mud baby Star Stevens has obviously never went to refereeing 101. Obviously not. He had that problem back in the first few weeks here in IPW. We thought he had it worked out, but apparently he's back to his old ways. Come on, Hamburglar. Let's get this going. Hack Myers unceremoniously dumps Scoot Andrews to the outside of the ring like a sack of potatoes. Potatoes? Is Fidel Sierra in the house? Absolutely not. Okay. Here we go, Michael Shane. Take it to Scoot Andrews on the outside. Scoot, not as weary as one might think. He was able to get out of that dropkick attempt by Michael Shane. He got out of the way a little bit, or he might have been knocked out of the ring right then but as it was he was able to catch his breath a little bit and that's probably saved him from getting penned right about now the talent that these guys possess and the presence of mind you see hack myers absolutely level scoot andrews with a huge reverse neck breaker and he throws him down it comes off with a huge axe handle right across the throat one two good thinking by mike sullivan i was mentioned earlier about michael shane being trained by Shawn michaels and having his attitude and ego truth is this kid has got a hell of a lot of fan following on the internet he's one of the best students that's come out of Shawn michaels school since spanky and the american dragon who i I will be the first to tell you those two guys are absolutely unbelievable and I can only hope that they come to IPW. We got Michael Shane, he's going to be a regular. He's living in Tampa now and you see the teamwork of Mike Sullivan and Scoot Andrews backing his greenhorn up into the corner and the mud baby comes over. He looks to be a bit flummoxed. Bit what? Flummoxed. Okay, that's a word. I have no idea what that means whatsoever. But I do know that Hack Myers is taking it to Scoot Andrews right now. Scoot Andrews may be one of the top wrestlers in the teach somebody everything you know. You don't teach them everything you know because you never know when it can come back and blow up in your face. Do I have to bring up what happened to Mr. Wrestling 2 and Magnum TA? Do I really have to talk about it, Aaron? Because it gets me all tore up inside. I don't know if you have to, but you haven't got any of your old 
school references in a few weeks here, so I guess it's about time. Well, it all started when Mr. Wrestling I, I was kidding. Oh, okay. Let, let's go to the match right now. Great action going on as Hack Myers thinks he's back at old school IPW, has a rear chin lock on Scoot Andrews. That's actually very, very smart, trying to slow him down, take away that advantage that Scoot Andrews has with the speed. And I tell you, people consider Hack Myers because he was an ECW, just a hardcore trash wrestler. Well, if you're watching this match, you know that's far, far from the truth. He was always a good wrestler, and now that he's gotten himself in phenomenal shape, he's even that much better. Oh, roll up by Scoot Andrews, one, two. Little bit of a slow count there by Star Stevens. I don't know if Star Stevens is showing preference for Sullivan and Andrews, or I don't know if he's just blown up. I would count on the latter. Yes, I think I would too. It's not often Star has to go in for a match of this length and quality. He tries to book himself in the matches that are going to go shorter so he can get back to the small in the back, not the small of the back. I was talking to Michael Shane after this match. I was talking to him the next day, trying to get a feel for what he thought of IPW. And all he could talk about, Aaron, was Extra Innings Ballpark Cafe down on Central Avenue in South St. Pete. And this sweet, sweet hot chicken wings with the blue cheese. Don't ever steal my line again. Oh, that's yours? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. All right, and let's not forget our other sponsor, Diamond Dolls. Everybody go in there after the matches, too. Heard Hack Myers got into a little bit of trouble there. One, two. Oh, Black Nature Boy almost gets a three count. Michael Shane went to break up the attempt, but quite frankly, if Hack Myers hadn't kicked out, Michael Shane would have been a second too late. Hack Myers did get himself in a little bit of trouble, and I can't blame the guy. As he said when I asked him, Hack, what happened? He looked me dead in the eyes and he said, Ronnie, I thought the cop was a prostitute. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Don't say anything because you can't follow it up, Aaron. Hack Myers comes over, tags in Michael Shane, and he says, I'm sick of beating Scoot Andrews around the ring. You get a piece of him. Mike Sullivan comes over, rolls Star Stevens like a tumbleweed, rolling across the old west dirt streets. That's kind of what he resembles if you look at him closely. Yeah, that's true. I tell you what, though, Mike Sullivan barely touching Star Stevens, and he sold it like I sell a Ron Nini slap and rolls himself almost out of the ring. He did. He, he actually, the only reason he stopped rolling is because we had a door stop over in the corner. He rolled right up it like a ramp and come rolling back down. But look at him. He's right back in the middle of the action. It reminds me of the dreaded mud match from back in 1976 in Puerto Rico where Carlos Colon, Abdullah the Butcher, and the Botswana Beast faced off. All right, once again, Ron Nemi, we talk about that match. It was just so crazy that every single time we talk about it, the participants seem to change. It's hard to remember what exactly happened because it's one of those wrinkles in time. It's like from another plane, another dimension. But right here at the WrestlePlex, we got Michael Shane. He's trying to sap the strength from Scoot Andrews. But you see Scoot, he's constantly keeping those legs and arms pumping to keep the blood flowing through his brain and through his body. And then he locks on the sleeper hold as though he was Vern Gagne going to get Ray old. Stevens in Milwaukee. All after. right, Ron. Nobody wants to hear about the AWA. Nobody wanted to hear about the AWA when they were on ESPN a decade ago. They certainly don't want to hear about it now. But what they do want to hear about is what they can catch coming up at the WrestlePlex on the 20th of July. We've got a fan-friendly show, a family show, if you want to call it that. You can bring out your kids, not worry about the usual things that happen at IPW shows. And then IPW back here at the WrestlePlex on the 27th. And then we're back for another fan appreciation night, August the 2nd. It's buy two tickets, get one free with special pricing. You're watching some action from the last fan appreciation night. Fans, it's going to be wild. You've got to come check us out for all three shows at the WrestlePlex. 727-526-6778 for tickets or go to ipw-hardcore.com. And I'm not one that usually spread rumors or hearsay, but I'll tell Dr. you what. Heresy? No, I don't even know what. That probably word was probably used out of context. But I was told on July 20th at that family-friendly show you can bring out the whole family. That's August the, oh, the family-friendly. No, shut up, Aaron. I got it straight. I'm looking at the cards. Mike Sullivan comes in on fire, leveling everybody in sight with a clothesline except for Star Stevens, who we're afraid we might die if he gets hit with a clothesline. But on July 20th, Concession Boy has told me in confidence on that night he will be releasing the WrestlePlex exclusive Corn on the Cob, three for a dollar. Wow. Absolutely. Not. I've heard of two for a dollar. But oh, let's forget to talk about the corn. Mike Sullivan absolutely levels Hack Myers right there. Two. Oh, almost a three count. I thought it was over right there. It was about 103 degrees in the ring that night. 
what's his name? Scoot Andrews. What? Is his name Scoot Andrews? Uh, you gotta give me. I, I'm all excited. I'm talking about corn on the cup. There's a four way. There's clotheslines. I'm trying to say Star Stevens and I accidentally call him Scoot Andrews. Come on. Oh my God. Look at that. Beautiful what? super kick. I think he's got to lead to Shawn Michaels. Sweet he should chin be. music. Sweet chin music as they used to call it in the WWE. WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it. And they're a double rake to the eyes by Michael Shane and Scoot Andrews. But Scoot, even though he got raked in the eyes, he's coming back. Oh, and just levels Michael Shane right there with another move I've seen a hundred times and can't name. But Hack Meyer's there to break it up. Star Stevens has lost control of this match totally. That move is called, I'm going to cross your arms in front of your throat and drop you on the back of your head, Scoot Andrews style. All right, I thought that's what it was called, but I wasn't sure enough to say it. Hack Myers, where did he come with the big super kick level in Scoot Andrews? Once again, Mike Sullivan, he's there to break up the pin count. Hack Myers peppers him with some wicked punches right to the chops. But Mike Sullivan, unfazed, hits him with a power slam. Hack Myers has got to be finished. I tell you what, Michael Shane over in the corner, selling like a door-to-door -door lettuce salesman. And right now, Mike Sullivan going up to the top rope. What's it? Oh no, Michael Shane just, oh, racks him down in his McGroin. And that can't feel good for Mike Sullivan. And Ecstasy can't be too happy either. She says he's hung like a horse. And if that's the truth, he's got to be injured. Oh, Let's what's see. going on here? Powerbomb by Scoot Andrews. No, are you sure? He sets him up for a powerbomb. Hagmeyer's fighting for his life. Whoa. Oh my god, he gets hit with a combination. Powerbomb, blockbuster off the top rope. One, two, three. Your winners, Sullivan and Andrews.